Okay, we are underway. Um, this is the 16th, if you can believe that, <laughs> 16th parlor car chat um, that uh, we've done. Uh, this is a program of the St. Louis Obispo Railroad Museum, which you see there on your screen, the, the front page of their website. Uh, so you can always find out uh, what's coming up, what we've already done, parlor car chat-wise. Um, all the completed chats are uh, recorded, so you can go back and watch any of them you want to any time on, that, on the parlor car chat webpage. Uh, and this is also a reminder that um, you can help out the museum um, stay in business, quote unquote, uh, by making a donation. There's a couple of ways to do that on the website and, and indicated here under the support uh, category is make a donation uh, for various things or for, for general uh, use. Um, obviously, if it isn't obvious, I'll tell you, the, the Railroad Museum's income basically fell to zero when the, all this COVID stuff started. So if uh, you're in the mood to help support the museum, that, that would be great. Okay, so um, off to what we are about today, which is a guided photo shoot, is what we called it at the time, um, on the Santa Maria Valley Railroad. It was part of um, an open house weekend that the railroad and the Friends of the Railroad had back in, in 2015. And you can see on the screen now, um, the uh, web page on the Friends uh, website about this day and about what we're going to be talking about. Those pictures that you sort of start see, seeing there, and there's a whole bunch below that if you kept scrolling down. A lot of those pictures and maybe a few more uh, we're going to see today and, and, and talk about. And before I... Well, I will remember to say it because I think there's a slide at the end that uh, talks about uh, upcoming... Uh, barbecue uh, for the friends and the potential uh, either associated with that or separate of a, of another that w that will be the second uh, what or what would be the second guided photo shoot um, available on the on the railroad. So let's get into uh, exactly what we're talking about. Uh, if you happen to have this uh, map of the Santa Maria Valley Railroad, it might come in handy to follow along where we're where we're going today. Uh, this map is on the Santa Maria Valley Railroad's website, not the Friends, but the railroad itself. Um, there's a link at the top of every page said, uh, called Map, and, and you can find it. So for today, um, what we're going to be doing is chasing uh, a 32-car train on the Santa Maria Valley Railroad, starting at the interchange in Guadalupe, uh, up here in the upper left-hand corner, and uh, we're going to photo-wise, we're going to pick up the train just outside, just leaving the, the uh, interchange yard here and heading on down the, the Better Avia branch of the railroad. Actually, this is the main line of the railroad, too, and then it becomes pure Better Avia branch down here going into the Better Avia industrial part where, where the old um, sugar mill is. Uh, so anyway, we're going to pick the train up there. We're going to uh, come all the way down um, into the Betteravia branch and uh, deposit, uh, put a whole bunch of covered hopper cars into storage down here. Uh, then we're going to head back up out of uh, the Betteravia branch, back onto the main line, and then head up, head on into town. The first thing we're going to do at Betteravia storage is drop some um, empty tank cars for storage purposes, and then um, travel on into town, all the way along here, on into town, um, and use the Y, the downtown Y, to run around um, some of the cars on the train. We've got, to, we've got to get, because of the position of uh, the, the uh, pick suite uh, spur, we, we've got to get the engine on the other side of the of the reefer cars in order to spot them on the pick suite siding uh, or spur down there. So we're going to do that, then we're going to come back up to pick suite and, and spot a, uh, one or two, I forget exactly, uh, reefers. So that's, that's what we're doing. 
Um, uh, and here, here we go. So here's a picture of uh, um, the photographers uh, catching the train uh, coming not too far out of the Betteravia, or not Betteravia, the Guadalupe Interchange yard and the Santa Maria Valley's own yard uh, right outside of the ex exchange. In fact, that, that exchange yard is shared with uh, Union Pacific, I, I think, if, if it's still that way. Uh, where each of us can put cars into that uh, yard as as need be or as as is helpful doesn't happen too yard too often I don't think that UP uh, puts cars in there but um, we we do Santa Maria Valley does all the time um, another thing I should mention before we get too far along here um, this is this activity was obviously a sanctioned uh, photo shoot for the benefit of friends uh, photographers. Uh, and, and these, this group of photographers got access to areas that the general public is not, where the general public is not permitted, whether you're a photographer or not. Um, so uh, I, I do not take our presence uh, the way you see it here today as something you can do anytime. You, you cannot. Um, uh, you need to watch for, uh, and that's why I mentioned an upcoming, or at least a possibility of an upcoming, coming guided photo shoot on the railroad um, next year sometime perhaps. Keep an eye on the Friends website for, for that, uh, by the way. So here we go. We'll move on a little bit. Um, there's a couple of uh, the photographers. That's Rob in the uh, background there with the uh, safety jacket on. Um, and the, the covered hoppers, uh, the whole train, the whole 32-car train is, is going past the photographers here headed down towards um, Betteravia. Uh, it looked like that was an all covered hopper train, um, but it wasn't. Here Here on the tail end of the train are some other cars, um, uh, reefers, tanks, and, and lumber cars particularly. Um, this was, We started this photo shoot I think basically in the early afternoon, um, if, if I'm recalling right, as we started it in the up in the UP exchange yard and, and everybody got a copy of the uh, train orders for the day and we uh, probably watched them move the cars around a little bit in that yard to, to pre-position things in the train for for what's going to happen um, the, the gist of it is all those covered hoppers were headed down to better radio for storage or at least most of them um, and that would what we what the train needs to get rid of first and then these cars on the tail end uh, go to various places, storage, Delta, Energy, uh, Pick Suite, and Hayward Lumber. So uh, probably uh, they were just sort of randomly positioned at the back end of the train so that when we start headed on into town after getting rid of the hopper cars, or most of them, um, then we could start dropping the remainder in the, in the right spots. So here we get a better view of the, some of the tank cars, uh, the lumber load that's headed for Hayward, clear out by the airport. We're not going that far today, but um, that's where that car is ultimately headed. And here we are crossing one of the farm uh, crossings along the way. It still looks like a, an entirely covered hopper train. This is fun too, by the way. We managed to have the uh, the 70 tonners, the, the two locomotives there, back to back like they were. But this is like an iconic arrangement for the locomotives on the railroad. Um, this is what photographers long for or remember with great nostalgia, the, the, these 70 tonners being hooked up like this. And headed on, still headed on down to uh, Betteravia. Uh, on the left there, you can see one of the uh, railroad guys uh, working on the um, cutting these cars, hooking these cars up, doing what they need to do to, uh, today to get all the cars where they want to be. Um, the picture on the right is an interesting move. Uh, I don't remember happening when I was around very often. Uh, 
but basically what has happened at this point is the, the train has come down uh, from the interchange yard, which is way back in the back of the picture on the left-hand side behind the train. The locomotive pulled the train into this siding and coupled up with these one, two, three, four, five, six hopper cars that were already in the siding just sitting there. So they couple up to that. So now the locomotive's in the middle of the train, you might say. And and what we're going to do is shove the six hopper cars that were already sitting there in the siding, we're going to shove them on down or on towards the photographer um, and further into Betteravia to store them. And at the same time, we're going to pull the hopper cars that are in the, the new trains, the new arrivals, you might say, that's behind the locomotive here, meaning away from us. Uh, we're going to pull them into the siding and then just leave them there. That's where we want to ultimately put them today. And uh, then replace or, or reposition the six hopper cars that we found in the siding on further down into uh, Betteravia. So hopefully I described that <laughs> uh, and you were following along. It was kind of an interesting move. It, 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 it doesn't that kind of move doesn't happen a lot, uh, or at least when I was around. So here's the point of that new train with the old hoppers on the front, the locomotives in the middle, and the new uh, hoppers uh, and, and the rest of the train uh, to the extent that it's still hooked up. Actually, all the non-hoppers that were coming down here were, uh, were probably left back at Betteravia Junction. Um, and now it, uh, we're just moving hoppers around down here. So the point of the train, the front, um, it's heading uh, to the right in the picture and we've got uh, the conductor on the front of the train um, letting the locomotive engineer uh, know what to do because uh, the locomotive engineer at this point is blind, uh, can't really see. Uh, he's depending entirely on the conductor at the front to uh, tell him what to do. And here's another interesting thing that happens, uh, particularly down here where there's a number of farm crossings along the uh, Betteravia branch. Uh, you can't block those farm crossings more than the allotted amount of time when you're in the midst of doing moves, which I think is 10 minutes or 30 minutes. I, I forget now uh, what exactly it is, but it's, but it's a limited amount of time that you can block uh, the road or e even a farm crossing. Um, so if you're going to leave cars on the siding, you have to split them a, a, across the uh, farm crossing so that uh, farm equipment, farm trucks, cars, etc., can get um, through, generally speaking. So that's what's happening here. We're splitting the train um, so that the, the farm crossing can be uh, utilized. And here's our uh, uh, conductor or brakeman again, uh, working the train, putting the train either back together or taking it apart. I'm not sure what uh, is is which way it's going here. Um, in the process of positioning all these hoppers in the right siding or spur as as we head on into Better Avenue Industrial Park. There's a better shot uh, of the hoppers. Um, the the old ones, the one that we found in position today on the right of the locomotives and the new ones, uh, which are to the left of the locomotive. And now it's pretty clear. If you look way on the left in this photo, you can see that it's only hoppers in this entire train. And in the, in the way back distance behind there, you can see the front end of the cut of cars that was um, left. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I needed to let the dog out of the out of the room. You can see the the cut of cars way back there on the far left that were left at Betteravia Junction, um, and and so now we're only working with the covered hoppers that are going to be left down here. Um, but when it's all said and done, there are the locomotives moving again. And here's our either conductor or brakeman. I'm not sure who was playing what role today. Um, setting a brake 
uh, on one of the hopper cars as they're leaving a cut of cars at some place on in this, these set of moves. Here we are coming into now at this point now, um, I think probably the train has left the new hopper cars in that siding, and now uh, all it remains is to shove these uh, original hoppers. Uh, that they found in the siding on down into Betaravia where we're actually about the the point of the train here where the conductor is is about to cross the uh, road that leads from uh, Betaravia Road into the Betaravia Industrial uh, Park and where the San Ray Valley Railroad headquarters was uh, before they moved back into town to the uh, Osborne Yard. And you can see they in fact, now have entered the industrial park. There's the old sugar tanks uh, in the background, and uh, they're being on shoved down that track that runs basically parallel to those two sugar tanks. Probably still shoving in at this point. Well, definitely shoving in because it's, it's still attached. Otherwise, the locomotive will be coming back out by itself. Um, and you can see there, uh, 1801, one of the other... Uh, San Ray Valley locomotives uh, sitting back there uh, over the pit by one of the, by the old sugar tanks. That locomotive, by, by the way, I understand. I think I saw that it's back in service. It had been down for a while for uh, some repairs and major work, um, but I think now it's it's uh, back up and running. Still shoving on into the industrial. Park. Oh, this guy. Um, I think now we're uh, heading on. Uh, probably it was now pulled back up to uh, the Betteravia Junction, and and either right there took this picture, or after we crossed it, took this picture of a of a artichokes uh, on a nearby or a, a farmland right alongside the tracks. Yeah, okay, so now uh, we've left all those hoppers that we were uh, moving around down in Betteravia Industrial Park, and the locomotive went back up to the Betteravia Junction and picked up the remainder of the train that they had left there earlier while they were doing all the work at the Industrial Park, uh, picked up the remainder of the train and are now headed into town, uh, headed east from the Betteravia uh, Junction. And this is as they're uh, approaching, um, oh shoot, is it Ray Road? Um, and there's a siding here. Uh, you can see that the track on this side of the train is a siding where uh, at the time we were uh, typically storing uh, tank cars for people. And I think that's, and that is what we're going to be about here in a minute is uh, take some of some one or more of the tank cars off of the train as it exists now, and stash it in this uh, storage siding. So there we go. We can with the train has pulled through uh, this switch and across. I think it's Ray Road, and and now it's shoving back into that siding uh, to leave that tank car uh, there. And and this may be after we've already dropped another tank car that was in the mid middle of that train, one or two. Um, so it, it probably took a move or two to, to get that accomplished. And to the extent that there's some other tank cars going on into town not being left here, there they would be uh, probably for Delta Liquid Energy, which is uh, on in town. Um, Either that or I, we missed a few, we're going to miss a few pictures of them continuing to stash tanks into this uh, siding. It's been a while, it's been five years, I don't remember exactly what we did. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the, uh, I'll mention at this point, if I haven't already, the lumber load is headed out to Hayward, and the reefer car coming in is no doubt empty, um, and it will be dropped at Pick Suite. Uh, for loading frozen vegetables and then heading back out again to wherever those vegetables are going. There's a 
nice long shot of the train that's left now. We've dropped apparently all the tanks but one. So that must be the Delta liquid energy tank car. And we've got the reefer for Hayward and the, uh, I mean the lumber for Hayward and the reefer for, for Pixweed behind the uh, covered hoppers, which the covered hoppers at this point now are, are one of two things. They're either more storage cars, cars that are going to be put in storage uh, downtown somewhere. There was a, there were some places downtown where that, that was possible. Um, or it, it could be a load of plastic pellets for um, Okanite, the wire manufacturing uh, customer of the railroad out by the airport. Um, I don't know which it is. Um, it, it, it could be either one or a combination of, of both. And here we're crossing Black Road, I think. Uh, the train that we just saw is crossing Black Road and uh, some of the guys are getting a good picture of what's going on. And then we got our uh, crew leaning out the window checking on how things are going. <laughs> Okay, here we are downtown somewhere. Not exactly sure. Um, but anyway, pulling into town. We're headed for the Y. We, we, I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this, we go all the way downtown to where the Y is so that we can run around. We can get the locomotive on the other side of uh, mainly... Well, actually all the cars, but the main one was to get it on the other side of the reefers so that they could be spotted at pick sweep. The, 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 the spur only goes in one way. So the way the train was positioned earlier, uh, there was you couldn't drop uh, the uh, reefer in, into the spur. You had to run around it so it was on the other side of the locomotive. And here's the why. Um, this is uh, the... the um, the two locomotives in this picture are on the what you might call the hypotenuse of that side of the Y. Um, the track that's running um, on out to the right up here goes out to the airport branch, or is the airport branch. And the track here that runs across, they may, almost horizontally, is the main line that uh, goes from here back out to the Better Avia uh, junction off to the to the right. Uh, so the one leg of the Y is off the picture to the right. The, the locomotives are on the other leg of the Y, which is the uh, let's see east leg, and they'll run on down here off to the pic off the picture to the left, and then pull back along this um, side here. Actually, it could be moving the other way. I, I'm not sure. In fact, it might be, it probably is moving the other way because we're going to want to get the reefers behind uh, the locomotives. And here come the two locomotives across the diamond. Uh, in this orientation, the, the horizontal track goes off to the right to the airport, and the track that the locomotives are on um, and uh, coming towards us as you can tell by the conductor on the point. Uh, it, it is headed back west towards Betaravia. And now the uh, locomotives have reattached to the uh, reefer. Reefer, I think there's, well, it looks like there's two of them. Maybe they grabbed another one from Bell Storage. I'm not sure. Because um, I, I thought I remembered only one in the train. <clears throat> So anyway, it's so on the wreck side now. Um, the train is going to pull on up, going off to the right of the picture, on, on up past the switch into pick suite, and then back down into um, pick suite, shoving those reefers in, in front of the locomotive. Here that same train goes by. I, I was... I, I just kind of like this picture because of the way the four logos ended up making something of an arc in this picture. Uh, it's one of those, in, I didn't intend to do that, I'm sure. It was just a lucky accident that those, those four logos ended up like that. 
So now the two reapers that are on the train are being shoved into um, the Pixweet Spur. And, and there's one of the docks. There's five docks at Pixweet. Um, and uh, there's number five. You can see the number over the door. And I, I'm not sure what that second... I, now I, I just don't remember, and I don't want to go back and look at the pictures. Um, uh, but either either two reefers came in on that train, or they grabbed another one out of uh, Bell Storage, which is where reefers are stored until they're called up, uh, quote unquote. And uh, that's how they ended up with two. And you can see the conductor on the point of the train again, right there. Um, he's the one that's got eyes on where they're going and can help and can not help, but will actually spot the car to make sure it's at the proper position at, at these uh, doors. And there's another uh, different angle. That's now uh, the, the train is shoving further into or deeper into Pixweed. This is door number one down here. There's five doors, so door number five is probably uh, on the other side of this closest um, reefer. And there's our conductor keeping an eye on things. And now, job well done. <laughs> our, our two crewmen um, are have uh, obviously spotted the cars at Pixweet, and they're about to, or are in fact heading back out the spur, back onto the main line to go finish whatever the work uh, their work is for the day. I think for us though, this is the end of the of the trip. This is where we uh, left the the train and headed on back to the. At the time, the, the Betteravia Industrial Park, where the headquarters was, to uh, either close out the day or continue with uh, whatever the festivities were. Speaking of the festivities, I thought I'd throw in a couple pictures here of, of what the rest of the open house uh, event uh, looked like uh, back in 2015. Anyway, when they were down, when the headquarters was down at the, in, in Betteravia. Um, on the left is the the old rail car that uh, was uh, part of the Betteravia Industrial Park, owned by the owner of the property. Um, so uh, Kevin, who you can just kind of barely see right here, uh, led this tour uh, for everybody attending, whoever wanted to go tour, uh, attending the the open house and barbecue. Uh, and on the right. Speaking of, that's a view of the uh, Betteravia brochure that the friends created, uh, both to uh, for people on this tour, and, and Kevin talked uh, talked to this brochure. There's a map there you can see uh, of the old Betteravia township, um, and he was pointing things out. And this, in the middle, um, is an interesting shot. That is right straight down, looking right straight down um, what was 9th Street, when Betteravia was, in fact, a booming little town with lots of houses out here uh, and a schoolhouse and so on. That's part of what uh, Kevin was showing uh, people on the tour. And, of course, barbecue is a key element of the open house, and there's Rob uh, cooking up the tri-tip for the uh, uh, meal that day. This would have been this would have been all of the stuff happening on the Saturday, generally around lunchtime, give or take. Uh, the, the photo shoot was the day before afternoon, um, and then the open house and barbecue itself was the next day. And like I said, this this is um, this is a page on the Friends website um, referred to as activities, and and on this is a current shot of that page. And you can see they've got some dates set, no details yet, but they've got some dates set for 2021 events. Uh, the annual dinner gala in May, that's the, the bottom most entry there. Uh, the Friends Barbecue at the a railroad, that's what I've been calling an open house as well, um, in August, August 21st. And that, I assume, will be down at the, at the new headquarters, the Osborne Yard. And then... In September, an excursion to the Huntington Library. 
um, is uh, in the work. So keep an eye on this page. Um, link, by the way, to the Friends website and, and, and other links that I've talked about or other things that I've talked about uh, during this uh, conversation will be uh, on the Parlor Car Chats page under this session's um, heading. Okay, so that gets us to the end of this one. This is a relatively uh, short uh, Parlor Car Chat today. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I hope you all got uh, uh, something out of it. Um, this is a reminder of a number of things in the upper left-hand corner. Please donate to the museum if, if you're so moved. Um, in the upper right-hand corner is the website, uh, the web address for the page about Parlor Car Chats. It's got the upcoming schedule, all, all links to all the ones that have happened that you can go watch recordings of. Uh, the second item down on the right, feedback. If you want to provide me with uh, <clears throat> suggestions for future topics, um, there's a few thrown out there that you can quote unquote vote on, um, that sort of thing. So if, if that, if, you, if you'd like to do that, we'd really appreciate it. And lastly, uh, in the lower part of the right hand side is a uh, uh, preview of coming attractions. The next parlor card chat will be on October 31st and uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, the same as it's always been. And the topic will be the circus train. And I'm very excited about this topic too, as I will have with me and be using photographs of uh, a good friend of mine, Kelly Balla, who is pictured there in the lower left of the, uh, of the image, uh, who was in fact a Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey circus clown for seven years, worked on, lived on that circus train, actually both of them, there was a red one, a red unit and a blue unit, he, he lived and worked on both of them uh, during the course of the seven years. And he will be with me uh, talking, uh, sharing stories. Uh, we'll be using some of his pictures that he took um, from living on the train. Uh, it, it should be fascinating. So with that, let me go back and open up this to see if there's any questions. Okay, um, does anybody have any questions or comments they want to make? Well, I just want to thank you for doing this one on the SMBRR. I really um, enjoyed seeing the cars out there where they're working. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's every day, every work day. Yep. Practically. Anything else? Okay, well, uh, thanks again for joining, and uh, we will see you on the 31st. I'm looking forward to that.